there's something very special about a river to me. And I don't know why exactly, I think it takes me back to times I spent with my grandfather fishing along a river. But I just love it. I love the sound. I love the smell. I love obviously the sight of it. And I find myself walking along the bank, always peeking in, looking for fish. Probably does take me back to a time when I was real small and I was with my hero, my grandfather. Once everybody got awake and moving around, it was really cool to sit down with my buddies T-Ray and Jay and have a morning meditation. My favorite meal of the day, breakfast. And there's something about breakfast being cooked by a guy that just loves to cook, so much so that he cooks to classical music, jazz music, whatever he's got, whatever he's in the mood for, Jay is the musical cook. It's a special touch to the meal, and then the food is outstanding. Today we're heading back to one of my favorite spots in the whole world called Moose Meadow and it's where we fish for reds. When you get rigged up, you know, you pull in and you park and then you start getting rigged up, you're putting your gear together, your waders and your hooks and your sinkers and all that good stuff and you just pray, Lord, let me not have forgotten something really important because now it's on. Talking about courage, and remember the opposite of courage is not fear, it's cowardice. Fear is something that men of God have to deal with. Now, what's interesting to me is that fear, the original word, it's an old English word, and it means ambush, danger, sudden attack, and disaster, all right? Let me put that in context. If you're, if you're traipsing through Sherwood Forest, and uh, you're, you're on your way someplace nice, and a pack of wolves and some guy with blue paint all over his face jumps out of the, of the forest, and the wolves are trying to eat you, and the guy's throwing the spear at you, and you get all bloodied up. Somehow you make it through all that mess, and you get back to your loved ones. What you would say, you would describe that situation as one in which you had fear, okay? I'm not talking about the emotion. Remember, it's ambush. It's sudden attack, it's danger and disaster. So that's real stuff. And God gave us this fight or flight response inside of our bodies when we're attacked like that, 
our body responds, you get adrenaline, you get dopamine, norepinephrine, things are just flying around in your body and you can fight, you can defend, you can run, you can do whatever you need to do. That's the original word. Today, if you look up fear in the dictionary, it doesn't say those things. It says fear is a distressing emotion brought on by impending danger or peril, whether real, get this, or imagined. Hmm. We have the same bodies today that we did back in Sherwood Forest days. Let me put the, the dots together for you. What it means is this. When we're confronted with a decision today, not a pack of wolves, not some blue-faced guy with a spear, that's not what we're dealing with for the most part today. We're dealing with decisions, public speaking. Do I take this job, that job, those kinds of things. And the response in our bodies is exactly the same as if we have to use all of that energy to fight off danger, sudden attack, disaster. And unfortunately, what's happening to men of God today is that we're being stressed because we've become afraid of the wrong things. We've become afraid of things we have no need to fear. God said, I will always be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, be alert, seize the moments. And so we're walking around all stressed out, feeling horrible because we're not overcoming those fears. Now, there are a few things that we should be afraid of. I, I don't run across uh, traffic with my eyes closed. I'm afraid to do that. That's wisdom. I'm afraid to bet my house on the roll of the dice or flip a coin. I'm not going to do that. That would be stupid. Okay. Now that, that causes, that's more wisdom, but we'll call that fear. Um, so there are a few healthy fears. So I'm not encouraging anybody to do anything that's, that's uh, dangerous to yourself without reason. But consider this, in 2 Timothy, God said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but what I've given you is love, power, and a sound mind or self-control. Man of God, there's two things that you're afraid of typically. Number one is fear of, what do you think? Failure. Fear of failure. Fear of failure. Now think about that. If you're afraid of failure, the manifestation in your life is often you're afraid to try. You're afraid to try. If you become afraid to fail, then not trying is the best way to avoid the realizing of that fear. I'm much more afraid of not trying than I am of failing. I'd much rather try and fail than be somebody on the sidelines that's watching everybody else trying to make something good happen in this world. The other fear we often struggle with, we just call it fear of man. Fear of man. What will other people think? This often affects young guys. I'm so afraid of what other people will think. My hair's got to be perfect. I've got to dress just right. What if I say the wrong thing? Throw that junk in the ocean. Be the best you you can be. And don't be afraid of what other people are going to think. I don't go out of my way to offend people. I really don't. But if, if my being me offends, if my being a man of God offends somebody, tough. They'll have to deal with that. I'm not afraid of what somebody else thinks about me. Interestingly, where research shows that we were born with two innate fears, loud noises and falling. So if we're born with those two, where do the rest of them come from? We learn them. We learn them. We learn to be afraid of things. We try in school. We, we do a little public speaking in school. We ask the question that everybody else probably wanted to ask, but then somebody laughs at us. We, we tried and failed at something. And all of a sudden, we start building up this box of fears, and we're carrying this stupid thing around with us. Dump the box. Dump the box. There are very few things we really need to be afraid of, and we need courage to overcome those fears. 
But you walk around with too many fears in your box and pretty soon you stop trying, you'll stop reaching, God will call you to something important and you'll say no because you will doubt yourself instead of putting your confidence in Him. Irrational fear is your best guess about the worst case scenario of something that could maybe might happen in the future. Come on, stop wasting your time working through in your mind what's not going to work and let's start trusting God. Let's start saying yes to those things that He puts in there. Well, what if it's me? What if, what if it's not God? What if it's just my idea? If it's a good idea, go do it. And if you fail, you at least tried. Well, what, if, what will people think? Who cares? It's you and God. It's you, your family, and God. It's you, your close friends, and God. That's it. Everybody else can just go do their own thing. Let's start believing God. Let's go past our fears. Let's pursue some great things. I can tell you my own story with this. I experienced some of this myself back in 94. I went through a period of burnout. And there were two things I didn't want to do after going through burnout. I didn't want to do public speaking and I didn't want to do travel. Well, God opened the door. And yes, we are in Alaska, so we're going to get a little rain, but we can hang in there. God opened the door for me to travel to Africa. I ended up doing a project for the president of the nation of Benin. And through it all, I had to overcome burnout and public speaking and travel. It was a real challenge, but I'm so glad that I did. We can overcome anything from the past that's hurt us. We can overcome those challenges if we just try. I don't want you to be bound any longer by anything in the past. You can overcome your fears. You can have courage. And by doing so, you'll walk through the doors that God has for you and your life will be changed and the lives of those around you. We're fishing the famed Kenai River here in Alaska and when the salmon are running, it's an amazing thing, man, because people will literally line up along the banks and they, they flip, they cast for these fish. And I mean, in one day, you can have 40,000 fish come up the stream. It's amazing. A lot of respect from fishermen to fishermen and fisherwoman to fishermen. So meeting some great people here. The technique we're using is flipping, where we're not, it's not a long cast, it's just a flip, and the salmon are swimming up the stream. And uh, the great hope is that they, as your line tightens, they swim into your line, you set the hook, and then it's on. But uh, these are red salmon, they're gonna run, you know, eight, 10, 12 pounds. And in this current, as you can see, it is a riot. So we're gonna get after it. We're gonna catch a few today and uh, see what the Lord brings. Using this technique called flipping, at times the, the fish the, the hook doesn't get the fish just right. If it's not caught in the mouth, you have to release it. And it's the craziest thing because if you hook a fish anywhere other than in the mouth, it's like trying to pull in a board. Uh, it's pretty exciting. And uh, as you can see, these fish can hit any time. There's one now. Let's go see if we can help get this fish netted. It's all about teamwork on the river, and I was happy to net a fish for this great lady fisherman next to me. 
I think she could outfish most of the guys on the stream. What a riot. Hey, that was exciting. <laughs> well, Kenai River in Alaska. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. Fishing with your friends is hey, nothing like it. It makes all the difference in the world. It's fun to catch a fish, but if you get to do it with your buddies, mm -mm. it's a beautiful thing. Okay, hold him up, hold him up between us, you and me. Look at here. What do you think? <laughs> awesome fish. Kenai River, Alaska. Beautiful. More to come. Thanks, brother. crazy is when I made that cast, I felt in my spirit, I felt like the Lord said this cast, and boom, he was on. That was awesome. That was a faith builder right there, man. Like he told Peter, he said, hey Peter, go down to the shore, cast your line. What happened? He got a fish. This is biblical, guys. We're fishing. Jay, uh, number one, thank you for opening your home to us and allowing TV for Dads to come up and kind of enjoy Alaska. But uh, got to get to know you a little bit. Uh, our people are going to want to know who's who's this cool guy. So so tell me tell me a little bit about Alaska. What what is it you like about this place? What does it mean to you? Well, Brian, Alaska. I don't like it. I actually love it. All it's right. uh childhood fantasy to come up to Alaska and enjoy the outdoors. To be outdoors, to be a part of it in the soil, in the water, in the weather, in the elements, and climate, just to enjoy this great land. It's the last frontier. Uh, what I find is men around the world always hear about Alaska and they hear that buzzword Alaska and it just sets them off. It just charges them up like Alaska. There's just nothing like Alaska. And so it caught me as well 30 some years ago and I just love this land and love the people of Alaska. Uh, 30 years ago, 30 some years ago. 30 some years ago. Wow. 35, 38 years ago. No kidding. Yep. Wow, so you were just a child then. You were yeah, just a, just, just a Just child. a babe. Just, just a teenager, seven, <laughs> 17, uh, 17, 18, yeah, yeah, when I moved here. Good for you. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. And and how does this place uh, impact your family? I know your family is around here a lot. What, what does this mean to your family? I guess one time someone asked me, Brian, what's your resume, Nepper? Hmm. And I said, well, my resume is my family. I just love my family and they know that. That's to my heart and soul and yeah. that's the core of who I am is who my family is. Mm. Uh, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Show me your family, you know, and mm. I'll tell you what you've done the last 30 some years of your life yeah. by showing me your family. It's good. My, f my family loves being here. Uh, they love to kill fish. Yeah. They love the adventure. They love the late nights, the campfires, the food, and the un unrestricted time frame of nothing and uh, no clocks and nothing to worry about where we can just uh, be honest true family members and not be encumbered by stuff yeah now in the summer how much daylight are we are we dealing with we're, we're dealing with from like 4 a.m until 
uh, it gets dusk around one o'clock or so. So we have about three <laughs> hours of dusk uh, at the peak at, at uh, summer solstice. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. My goodness. So what are some of your favorite things to do here? By the way, I love the way you said it. A lot of places, you know, we, we talk to guys and go, well, we go catch fish. Up mm. here, we don't catch fish. What do mm. we do? We go kill fish. We Brian. kill fish. Brian, we're here right. to kill fish. Yeah, this is good. No, this isn't catch. Yeah. This is killing fish. Yeah, and then we convert them into fabulous meals. We eat everything we kill. <laughs> we do not kill things for pleasure. Yeah. We eat and turn it into to food. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fantastic. What's that's your awesome. favorite? I mean, what what do you to do? What do you like to do? Who's your what's your favorite fish? Where do you like to go? Oh, favorite fish. Um, let's see. Silver salmon fishing in Seward is a kick. They like you. You fished for silvers. They yeah. dance on top yeah. of the water. Up they go. Uh, halibut fishing is always a challenge. You don't know if it's 10 pounds or 110 or 210. Yeah. It's uh, exciting. But my all-time favorite is fishing for sockeye salmon. <laughs> Not just sockeye, but the big second-run Kenai Reds on the Kenai River. Oh, I love that. That's nice. that's my favorite. You're pretty good at that too, buddy. You got that well, flip thing down. You and, are too. I well, was watching you. You were nailing them yeah, real well. Yeah. You have yeah. the you you have the Kenai twitch they the call Kenai it. The Kenai twitch. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, I was doing that in my sleep too. It's kind of scary. My wife will be What's wrong with you? No, I was with Nepper. It's okay. On the twitch. We're all, we're okay. <laughs> This is what life's about right here. Catching fish, Kenai River, Alaska with two buddies. What a wonderful Bravo. day. <laughs> Good fish. Congratulations, Thank Brian. You. Great job. Now what you have to understand about this river, the Kenai River, it's gorgeous water. It's glacier fed, so it has this beautiful milky blue to it. Absolutely gorgeous, but treacherous as well because the bottom is all rocky and you might have a stretch uh, so far <clears throat> that's kind of smooth and then all of a sudden there's a rock this big and when you get fighting a fish and you're sliding back you're trying to land that fish we're trying to net it all it's all crazy and if you're not careful you'll catch a foot you'll catch your heel and over you go okay here's a confession i find it really funny when people fall down especially in the kenai fishing for these reds people fall down That aren't even a cut. That wasn't even register as a cut. Well, I know this about you. People love you. They respect you. And I love to be around your kids when they're around you because I see an admiration that they have. So you've done well and you've raised this next generation to love God's creation, to love other people, to serve other people. And uh, I guess eventually, the day will come that that's what we have left, is the legacy that we've left. And man, I know guys that are out there, they're trying to save the world and they're ignoring their family. And I, I admire that about you, is that you've taken um, great care to love those kids and to raise them up right. And uh, they're all bright, they're intelligent, they're engaged, and they love to fish. They love, to fish. <laughs> they love to fish. Well, I tell you, I, I just appreciate your hospitality, opening your, your house to, to us, TV for Dads, to, to me as an individual. You know, I was here with my daughter Jenny some time ago, and 
uh, we still talk about it. It was a time to bring us together. Now, Jenny and I do a TV show for her as well. So just all of these experiences where when we can get that next generation around godly men, godly women, people that they can respect, they look up to us. And even through all that we've gotten wrong, we've done enough right that young people can still say, I want to be like them. It's pretty cool. Amen. Well, the mosquitoes are getting us. I can't say it's getting real dark, but I know it's getting real late. So I'm sure there's another adventure tomorrow. There sure is, Brian. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Love you. <laughs> you too. Well, I sure do like this place. This is the second time I've been here. It's one of those rare places where I just lose all track of time. It, it's amazing. We've been here for hours fishing. And uh, it doesn't matter if you catch fish or you don't. I mean, it's just fun to fish, you know. But just to be out here in the, in the beauty and the water and the trees and the birds and everything, it was a great day. Well, we just finished our time at Moose Meadow. How you guys feel? Tired. Tired is a it's word for you. Yeah, wet. And wet. And cold. <laughs> and cold. <laughs> Mr. T-Ray, how about you? Oh, I'm gratified. I guess. You're gratified. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, a, it was a wonderful time. We did catch a few. So now we're gonna attempt to hold these up for you, but you gotta look quick, because we're exhausted. I can't get my <laughs> <laughs> Moose Meadow, Alaska, what a time. Oh. What a time. We had a special dinner tonight for my dear friend, the Burkettes, T-Ray and his wife, Sandra and it was their 39th anniversary. I really like that. I appreciate commitment. That's part of a godly man's heritage is commitment. And here's a couple that's remained committed to one another for 39 years.